Hi, book lovers. This is Jenny, Julia Baby Jen's reading room, and this is my top favorite reads of 2013 so far. Busted! So, I decided I am going to share with you my top favorite reads of the year so far. The reason I'm doing it in July. Well, I read a lot of books, an obscenely amount of books a year. At the end of the year, there's always these fun top tens, uh, your favorite reads out of this genre, or this genre, your top ten favorite authors, all kinds of different categories, and there's usually uh, uh, a blog, or a blog, uh, there's usually a meme about uh, to do all these different things over the last like couple weeks of the year. And I love doing these, and they're so much fun. But for me, it's really challenging because when you read so many books, to, to narrow it down to 10 is just absolutely ridiculous. And I can never narrow it down to 10. I'm lucky if I can get it to 20. Um, so I decided this year that I am going to split it up into two parts. I'm going to do um, talk about my top favorite for the first half of 2013. And then at the end of the year, I will do the second half. I have read 192 books so far this year, which is a lot, even for me. Um, last year, I think I read 150 the entire year, I think, somewhere around that. My goal this year was originally 200, and I've upped it to 250. I'm not going to up it anymore, but I'm sure I will exceed that. So I decided I'm going to show you, I kind of divided things into categories, and there's not like a top 10 list for each category. I just picked my favorites out of that category. There's a lot of um, cross uh Across genres. I mean, there's some books that could fit into multiple genres. I just kind of stuck it where I thought it made the most sense to me. So, here we go. So, my first category, I decided to go with uh, N.A. Romance, um, which is New Adult. New Adult, if those of you don't know, is kind of a new genre. It used to, everything used to fall kind of under YA as far as romance went. Well, there's a lot more authors who are writing a little more adult romance. Um, I've just kind of adopted it. I, I, uh, I like romance. It's not my favorite thing, but every once in a while, you know, I really like one, a good romance. So I haven't read that many. And um, I could list, I think just about all of the ones I've read would make this list because there's not that many, like maybe eight or nine. And so they could all make my list. But I just picked one, actually. I picked my favorite. It's the only one that I gave five stars to, and that's what stands apart. And actually, I honestly could put this in my top five books I've read this year. Um, it was just such an amazing read. It is Ten Tiny Breasts. Uh, this novel was just amazing. It is totally unlike anything I've read, especially for N.A. Um, it does have graphic sex, but it's not the feature of the book. The book is not about really... A love story between this guy and girl. I mean, it is, but there's a deeper context to the whole thing. The book is about this girl named Casey who's 20 years old. Um, she um, is uh, run away with her little sister who's 15, Livy. They, about, I don't remember how many years, but it's been a few years. There was a horrible car, uh, car crash she was in. It was a drunk driving incident. And Livy didn't happen to be in the car, but everybody else she loved was her parents, um, her best friend, and her boyfriend were all in the car with her. They all died. She was the only survivor of this car crash and has forever changed her. Um, their aunt and uncle got custody of the girls, and they weren't that great of parental figures. Um, they put up with it. But uh, her aunt really didn't like Casey at all. She didn't mind Livy, but her aunt was really mean to Casey. Casey, you know, was not an easy teenager to deal with at the time. She went through some horrible uh, episodes where she was on drugs and she was drunk all the time. Or um, I, th I think she might have even had a couple suicide attempts in there. Um, but things kind of come to a head eventually. She, she starts to kind of pick up her life and get moving on. But then her uncle starts to come on to her little sister. So she takes her and she runs. They've also, the aunt and uncle, she's also figured out 
have her uncle has spent their entire inheritance that they got, which they got is a, de a good sum of money, on gambling. So he's not. They've not only done that to his little sister, her little sister, but they spent all her mon their money. So obviously not the best parents. So they run to Miami. I think they were in Ohio or something before that. The book is all about her and her sister trying to make it in Miami. Um, she gets a job working as a bartender in kind of an adult club. It's kind of a it's a girl dancer club. It's not really a strip strip club, but it's close to that. It's a little. Not quite as extreme, but she's a bartender in the club. And they live in this apartment complex, and they meet all these great people. But uh, her next-door neighbor is the guy that uh, she slowly starts to fall in love with, and he with her, although it's a very slow-moving romance because she doesn't trust anybody. Um, so, I mean, it's pretty good. Um, I, I just really loved it. And the end has the most shocking twist, which I did not see. I I. I I kind of thought something along those lines, but I didn't think it was that extreme, and I was totally shocked. The ending was beautiful. It was so well written, just great quotes, and just hilarious at times. I mean, just laughing out loud funny. It's really good writing. So this is an amazing book, and if you like romance or contemporary and want something really nice and deep, this is a great one to pick up, and it is one of my favorites so far of the year. The next books I'm going to tell you about are YA uh, contemporary romances and so just some plain old contemporaries. Um, these were all five star reads for me as well. We have Pushing the Limits by Katie McGarry. Um, this one I read right at the beginning of the year and I just, I just loved this book. I still do. The story of Echo and Noah and it's a little bit dark and deep. They have lots of, both of them have come from a troubled past and they're trying to deal with lots of things. And they, uh, it's a kind of a slow falling in love process. At first they don't like each other at all, um, but they eventually fall in love. Um, my only issue with the book was the language and it was pretty extreme. And I don't mind um, swear language really per se, but when you get a lot of it, it kind of starts to annoy me a little bit. Uh, but other than that, I thought it was great. I thought it was a great story. I just loved both Noah and Echo. They were great characters. And that's really what made this story for me. Next up is If I Stay by Gail Foreman. Um, I'm not sure if I like this cover or the uh, blue cover better, but um, the story is really, really great. Um, loved it. Was not really expecting to, to be as... Um, dark and deep as it really was. It's about a girl, uh, Mia, who is a senior in high school and has pretty much everything set for her. She really has have the perfect life. She has really great parents, a really great little brother. She has a really great boyfriend who, who loves her. He's a year older, so he's already graduated, and he's a musician in a band, which is starting to take off. And she plays the cello, and she's very talented and has gotten accepted to Juilliard. So she has everything set. The only questionable thing in her, in her life is that uh, she's going to be going away to New York. They live in Oregon. She'll be going to New York next year to Juilliard, and she's not sure uh, how she and her boyfriend are going to continue to you know, keep their relationship going. That's her biggest problem. But her family is in a car accident, um, an extremely bad one, which kills both of her parents, and she is in a coma and she has like an out-of-body experience for a day where she's outside her body uh, watching her friends and family and trying to decide if she wants to to die and pass on in the next life or try to get back in her body and keep going. Uh, so it's, it's comprised of lots of flashbacks between her and her family and her boyfriend and her friends. So I loved that. I just loved it. It was, it was heartbreaking. Um, I'm not going to tell you what happens at the end but you might be able to kind of guess, but it is such a really good book. And then the next one I have is actually its sequel, Where She Went. Um, this kind of gives away some of the ending, but um, this is three years later, and it's told from Adam's point of view, her boyfriend. Um, and he and Mia are no longer together. They haven't been for a long time. 
but he has to go, he's actually become a very famous musician. His band in, is like at the top of the charts now. So he's traveling on tour and he ends up in New York and he runs into her. Um, and it's, uh, it's all from his point of view. So his life since the accident basically and how they fell apart. And this is even better to me than If I Stay. I really loved Adam. He is just an awesome character. I really, really liked him, and I loved his point of view. It's ten times better than If I Stay, and I loved If I Stay. So, I mean, this is just an amazing series. I, I just love it so, so much. So, Okay, next one I have is Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Roll. You can't see the cover very well because of just the lighting, but it's a very light cover. But... Uh, this is a fantastic contemporary romance YA. Um, I think probably the best I've ever read. Um, I love this book so, so, so much. It's great. It kind of is a, reminds me a little bit of Ste Stephanie Perkins' books, uh, Anna and the French Kiss and Lola and the Boy Next Door, uh, but a little bit darker, uh, like Pushing the Limits by Katie McGarry, but not quite that dark. It's still light and, and fun, um, but they're dealing with darker issues, I guess I should say. And what I really, really love about this story is how the romance is handled in it. Um, they totally start off as not really even liking each other, but not hating each other, just kind of indifferent. They're both kind of outcasts in their, their school. And this place place in the 80s, by the way, so I love that. Um, Park is a uh, Asian-looking dude. Um, so he's kind of small for his age. He's not really unpopular. He has friends in the popular crowd, but he doesn't really like any of them. Um, he doesn't really have any close friends, but he kind of flies under the radar a lot because he's friends with them. So even though they're, he doesn't like how they are and act, they don't really pick on him specifically. Um, he is also really big into Taekwondo. His dad was a, was a master. So he's really big into that in comics. Um, Eleanor is the new girl at school. She has frizzy red hair, not very pretty, is very chubby. Um, she wears, she's, she's, her family is very poor, um, extremely poor. So she wears like old men's clothes from Goodwill type of stuff. I mean, but she kind of makes it her own style and it's not really ugly on her. Um, and, um, she lives with her mom and her creepy stepfather, and then she has five younger brothers and sisters, and they all share a room, because it's a two-bedroom house, and they age from the ages of two to eleven, her younger brothers and sisters. So she shares a room with five of the little kids. Um, so she does not have a good life, and then, of course, she's being bullied at school on top of all this, and has no friends. So she... Yeah, you just couldn't get more of an outcast girl. But she's very smart and very spunky. And she's not, you know, she's not afraid really of people. She will um, get in people's face if she wants to. But how it starts is actually uh, the first day of school she gets on the bus to ride to school. And everybody, like, has their own seat and they've staked out since the beginning of the year. And no one wants to let her sit down with them. And there's no empty seats. And the bus driver is screaming at her to sit down. And... She's about ready to cry because no one will let her sit with her. And finally, Park moves over and let her, lets her sit there. Um, not because he really wants to, but because he's not a bad kid and he, and he just can't stand it anymore watching her suffer in the aisle. And then they spend the next several weeks totally ignoring each other. So it's just awesome how their friendship grows. And it's, it's a slow start. And then um, she eventually just kind of lets him into her life. But most of it she keeps as a big secret. And... The best thing, though, about this book, you know, the two characters are great, was actually Park's parents. His parents are awesome, and there's lots of scenes in there because Eleanor spends more and more time at their house. Uh, his mom comes from Korea. Um, his dad is American, and she's big into, she's an Avon seller, and so she's big into makeovers and that kind of thing. And um, first, she doesn't really like Eleanor because she's not really a nice girl. And that kind of thing and it's just really funny and then his dad is just awesome even though he and his dad have lots of problems in the in the end his parents are great parents just just awesome people and I just love the scenes when they were at Park's house they were great 
So if you don't, if you only read one contemporary this year, this is the one you should read. It is so good, and I have not seen a bad review on it yet. All right, my last one in this category is Looking for Alaska by John Green. Um, I did not like this quite as much as The Fault in Our Stars. I read that last year, and then after I read it, I couldn't believe that I hadn't read a John Green. I'm like, oh my gosh, this, this author is amazing. I have to read the rest of his stuff. So my goal was this year was to read all of John Green's books. Well, I'm not doing so well. I've only read one, and I read this recently. Um, Looking for Alaska is his first uh, novel, and it's really good for a first novel by an author. I, I was really impressed with it. Um, it's, you know, it's definitely deep. You know, it made me think a little bit, and it's not like the, the stories are even nearly that similar, but just the feeling I got from it made me think of a separate piece. I can't think of the author right now. Um, but um, I read it in high school, um, extra credit, I think, for one of my English classes. And I really liked it. And this kind of made me think, uh, while I was reading it, I kept thinking of that book. I'm not sure exactly why, because they're not even really that similar uh, plots. I guess they're both boarding school stories. That's the closest. But just the feeling of it and the tone of the, the novel just made me think of that. Um, so this is about uh, Miles, and they nickname him to Pudge, who uh, lives, I think he lives in Florida, I can't remember, but down south somewhere. And um, he's, you know, a geeky kid, um, and he's tired of living his life like he is, and he um, wants to have a great, what did he call it, a great perhaps, uh, where he took his life in his own hands and tried something new and said something great could come of it. So he decided he was going to go to this boarding school in Alabama, and his parents actually supported his decision and sent him. So this is about uh, him going to boarding school, and he makes friends. Uh, his roommate's name is, oh boy, I can't think of his roommate's name, but, oh, they call him uh, the, 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 the Colonel, I think is what they call him. That's his nickname. I can't remember what his actual name is. Everybody has nicknames at this school. And they call him Pudge. They're being ironic because he's the skinniest kid you ever saw. Um, and he learns uh, basically about being a teenager. And, you know, he's not really, ha he's never been to a party. He's never had a girlfriend. So it's all kind of about this, uh, being on his own and learning about people and social situations. He falls in love with a girl who lives down the hall. Her name is Alaska, and that's her actual name. Um, but she already has a boyfriend. But he falls completely in love with her, and she's... Um, takes an interest in him. Um, I can't, I really can't tell if she likes him, likes him or not. It's not really ever clear. I think maybe she does, but uh, she kind of steers him uh, around the social situations. And actually, the book is divided into two parts. There's the before and the after. And the before is all about this. I'm not going to tell you what the after is about because it's a big twist that happens and I don't want to tell you and ruin it for you. Um, it also made me think of The Perks of Being a Wallflower. I haven't read the book, but I watched the movie and uh, the way that the seniors take around the, the, the kid in it. It made me think of that a lot, too. Um, but it gets very deep by the end, and it's just really good. Um, I flew right through it. I thought it was great. Not, not as touching as The Fault in Our Stars, but um, it, did, it did make you think, and it did, you know, give you moments of tears and, and that kind of thing so it was really good all right my next category only has two books in it um tale retellings is what i'm calling it it i would say fairy tales but one of them isn't really a fairy tale and these could have gone into another category but i just stuck them in here because i really like retellings of old stories and last year i read some great ones and this year i've read quite a few and i've been disappointed i haven't found a lot of great ones this year, but I did find two that I really, really liked. Catherine by April Lindner. Um, this was a release that came out in January and I read it shortly after. This is a ret retelling of Withering Heights by Emily Bronte, which I have never actually read. I only come up with that because it says that in the synopsis and everybody else says that, so um, I can't really compare it real well to the original since I haven't read it. but. I love this book, and this could have gone under suspense. Uh, this would be a good suspense story. 
This is actually told about uh, from two points of, of view, and it goes back and forth in every chapter. And the main character is Chelsea. Um, her mother disappeared. Her dad told her she died when she was like two or three years old. And so her dad has raised her. Well, she finds out, uh, going through her mother's things, that her mother didn't actually die, or at least they don't know if she did. She disappeared when she was two or three. She had some unfinished business to do in New York City, and she left, and she was never heard from again. So Chelsea runs away to New York City to try to find out what happened with her mother. Now, her mother is Catherine, um, and so it flips back and forth. So Catherine's point of view is in the past, before Chelsea was even born, um, and it talks about her teenage life. Her dad was a, uh, a, a owned a, a club, a music club, and it was very, very famous and highlighted up-and-coming bands, and he was very selective on his talent. So she was really in the rock and roll scene when she was a teen. She had an older brother who is kind of a, a jerk, and her dad, and she didn't have her mother either. I can't remember what happened to her mom. Um, but a, uh, I'm trying to think what his name is, Hence. Um, she meets a up-and-coming musician who's 17, hence, and she convinces her dad to employ him in the club and also give him a place to stay because he's homeless. And he, he lets him stay in their basement. And slowly she and Hence fall in love. And so this is kind of their love story. But the, the, the cool thing about it is, is this entire time you're reading about Catherine's point of view, you know something bad's going to happen to her. You just don't know what so that's why I say it's kind of like a suspense because you're looking at all the different characters in her life and trying to figure out you know what happened who who was the bad guy in this one I guessed it about halfway through um, it wasn't hard to guess but I still was stuck to the book because I wanted to know exactly how it all came about and we do find out at the end I wasn't sure if we were and then we have Chelsea's point of view she's backtracking everything that she's she can find out from her mother and she goes to this old music club hence is now the owner of the music club and he's not very friendly he's uh, completely changed over time and uh, but he eventually allows her to stay there and try to find out stuff about her mother so it's just a really good book and I really recommend it and my other pick for this category was Scarlet by Marissa Meyer this is the second book in the Lunar Chronicles the first book is Cinder and the first book is a loose retelling of Cinderella. This one is a loose retelling of Little Red Riding Hood. Um, and it still continues the Cinder storyline within it, which I really liked. I like this one even better than Cinder. I thought it was great. I loved it. I thought it was, it had me engaged the entire time. I don't think it took me very long to read it. The characters are really, really good. Um, we have a new main character, Scarlet, is in this one. And uh, the fun part is trying to figure out how she and Cinder are going to relate to each other because they don't know each other at all. Um, but it's really neat. And Cinder is still in this too. So we still get Cinder's point of view so we can find out what happens with her. So this is great and I can't wait for the next one in the series. The next category I have for you is YA Suspense. And I have four books that I put in this category and they're all four five-star reads. First off, I have Dead Silence by Kimberly Dering. Um, if I was going to pick my favorite out of this category, I would probably pick this one. I love the Body, Body Finder series. This is the fourth one in the series, and I've heard rumors this will be the last. I really hope not, because it didn't really tie anything up at the end. I mean, it had a good ending for the book, but it didn't tie anything up about the series, so I'm hoping she'll write at least one more. Um, it's always a murderer in their town, and the main character is Violet, and she has a paranormal ability to uh, sense a body that's been murdered violently um, and it can be an animal or a person when she was younger it was always animals that are cat killed and the killer also has the same she calls it an echo it's usually something to do with her senses like I know one of them she could hear wind chimes um, another one was a sense of smell so they're all different but they match the cat matches the bodies that it kills well it, you know eventually she gets a little older and there's um, she keeps coming across murders. The first two books were actually in her town. Now she has moved on to an actual secret agency within the uh, FBI um, uh, full of psychic people who have abilities and she's now joined their society not really by choice 
um, to help them try to find killers. And now she, most of her cases are not directly in their town, but they're close by, which is how we have so many murderers running around. And it is on the East Coast, so that makes more sense, too. She also has a romance through this one with her best friend, Jay, which he is just awesome. She is awesome, and she's made really good friends with a boy named Rafe, who really likes her, but she doesn't reciprocate that. And it's not a love triangle, which is nice. Um, and then she has other friends in it, too. Her parents know what's going on as far as her ability, and they've always known. And they know that she's part of this agency, but they don't really agree with it. They don't like, they're very overprotective, and they don't want her doing anything like this. But she's managed to convince them to, to let her stay there so she has people to relate to. Um, if they really knew what was happening, she hides so much stuff from them. If they knew what was happening, she would not be in it. But her, uh, at this point, her family and friends have been threatened uh, by the director of the agency if she doesn't continue. So she really feels, and she feels like they, they would go good on their word. Um, so she doesn't, at this point, have a choice, and she's participating in this. Although she does want to, to find killers, she... She likes the idea of it because she originally volunteers and she does want to help people and find and, and do justice. So she has good motives, but at this point she doesn't trust the agency and she doesn't really want to be part of it. She wants to do things on her own, but she's not been given that choice. So this one was really good because it had a lot of that in it, a lot about the agency, and we still don't know everything about the agency. We actually kind of had a kind of a cliffhanger on some of it towards the end, which is another reason why I think there should be another one. I hope so. But anyway, this was my favorite suspense so far of the year, and this is probably my favorite suspense, suspense series as well. The Name of the Star by Maureen Johnson. This is the first book in the Shades of London series, and I really love this series. It is so awesome. Um, it's a very creepy, suspenseful book. It takes place in London, and the main character's name is Rory. She's from the South America, and she is going to boarding school in London. Her parents have a, a job at a university in England, and she's picked a boarding school in London to go to, so she was closer to them. Um, she, the first part of the book is really about her fitting in and learning about boarding school and getting used to being around Europe and making friends and she's really really funny girl and a little bit odd but she does make some great friends um, and then slowly we get introduced to the mystery of the story which is actually a current day um, Jack the Ripper story someone is copycatting Jack the Ripper's uh, murder spree and the the big problem is that none of the London cameras are picking up anything, which is really strange because there's cameras everywhere. Um, it has a little bit of a paranormal element to it, but that doesn't come into play until a lot later in the book when the twist happened and you start learning what's really going on. So, but yeah, this was very creepy, and the end of it, I was genuinely scared for Rory. I, I don't really get scared in books very often, but I was genuinely kind of scared. So. It's definitely not for the faint of heart, and it's a really awesome suspense. Then we have the sequel to the Shades of London series, The Madness Underneath by Maureen Johnson. This is the second book, and there will be more, I'm told, which I'm really excited about. I think part of the reason I love these so much is because it takes place in London, and it's, and that's kind of cool. Um, this one takes place, starts out in Bristol, I believe, and then goes to London. I think it's Bristol. I can't remember which town it is, but... Um, so yeah, I love these series. Things are more complicated in this one time around. And uh, I didn't... The actual mystery in this one isn't really center stage. Um, it's there, and that's kind of what gets things rolling in her and how she gets back to London. But um, I wasn't as scared by the actual mystery in this one, and I don't think any of the characters were overly scared about it either. What gets freaky is towards the end we find there's another bad guy in her miss that she didn't even wasn't even aware of it. Um, so there's a whole other subplot that actually is where the climax happens and actually where we leave with a huge cliffhanger and we have a really big big twist at the end. Like, well we have of course we have the one big twist where we find out who the bad person is but there's another entirely big twist and it lets us on a, a huge cliffhanger so I really want to read the next one. Um, but this was good. Um, I don't know if I liked it better than Name of the Star. 
I would say I liked probably about the same. Um, they were both really good, and I think I just really like Rory and a lot of the characters in it. This book completely surprised me. I got this as an e-arc uh, from NetGalley at the beginning of the year, and it came it was released in January, and I hadn't heard very much about it, but I, it was a suspense, and um, I liked the cover a lot. So I went ahead and requested it, and then I read it, and I was amazed by it. It's one of the best uh, standalones I think I've read. I just really liked it, and it is a standalone. Um, it's very, very creepy, and there's lots of twists, and you're not really sure what's going on. The, the main character of it, her mother, uh, was, was schizophrenic, and she's been accused of killing the main character's best friend. And this is several months after the whole murder and everything, and all of a sudden um, clues are popping up that show that she may not have been the killer. Uh, but at the same time, the main character is um, afraid of she's turning into her mother and starting to exhibit uh, what she thinks are signs of schizophrenia. schizophrenia. So um, it gets kind of strange because you're not really sure, since it's all from her point of view, what's real and what's not. But it's really well written, really good. The ending was amazing. I just really loved it. I did kind of guess who the who the real killer was. Um, pretty, oh, I would say about two-thirds of the way in. Uh, but there's even more twists on top of that. So, yeah, it was a really good book. And I really recommend it if you like a good mystery. Busted!